Hey friends, it's Miss Cobb. I just wanted to check in and give you an update. I know some of you weren't able to come on back to school night, so I'm recording some things that we talked about at back to school night so that you're up to date and up to speed on what's happening here at PMHS for this school year. So we'll first start by talking about our options for learning at PMHS, which you've already heard about, but I just wanna explain them a little bit more. We have two options, the blended learning option, which is where your student would come face to face, two days a week, either Monday and Wednesday if they're in group A, or Tuesday and Thursday if they're in group B. So they would learn face to face with the teacher in the building for two days a week, and then three days a week they would be virtual, working at home. And then we have our second option, which is all virtual learning, and your student will be working Monday through Friday virtually from home. This year we are on a four by four schedule and that means that you're gonna take four classes in the first semester and then in, the, in January when our semester changes, you will have four new classes. So altogether you will take eight classes this year just like we usually do, but they won't be year long. They will be semester classes. Friday, even though we are off for our blended learning and we are not coming into the building, we are still here because we are using that for deep cleaning, for office hours, for teacher planning, and for um, office hours virtually if the teacher needs to check in with the student or vice versa. So even though we're not coming, anyone's not coming, um, you all are still required to log in virtually and to complete those assignments. So if you are a virtual learner, which actually everyone's a virtual learner this year, whether it's three days a week or five days a week, uh, let's talk about what that really looks like. It's not an easy option. I respect everyone who chose that option. I think it's a great option that we're providing, but I do want everyone to know it is rigorous. There is still learning that needs to be completed, assignments to be completed, and each student will spend about three to six hours per day on their classes when they are working virtually. So if you have chosen the virtual option and you are at home all five days, then about three to six hours is what you should be spending on those classes each day. If you have chosen the blended option and then you are in the classroom two days a week, you'll get your instruction from the teachers, but then on your days that you are virtual, again, you'll be spending about three to six hours and that includes Fridays. Virtual learners do have a seat reserved in the classroom. So if you ever feel like, I think I wanna come back to school and see my teachers two days a week, we have a spot for you. So on your schedule where it says letter A or letter B, then that is your reserved day that you can choose to come back to the classroom. We are offering primarily asynchronous instruction through Google Classroom. Now asynchronous instruction sounds like fancy education jargon. Let me break that down for you. Asynchronous instruction means that primarily our lessons are recorded. So it's not like students have to log in at a specific time for live instruction unless the teacher tells you that week that there is a time they would like for you to log on and complete activities with the class. But for the most part, it is recorded so students can pace themselves that day and they are flexible in when they can log in. We want to make parents be able to log in or with them if they need to after work or if students are still working, I know a lot of our students still work, then they have flexibility in their schedule. Attendance will be taken each day, so students are expected to log in virtually. They should log in, there will be Google Forms to complete so that we can count for it, account for attendance because it is still required. Even though you're at home, you are st still supposed to be working on your lessons each day and we will be taking attendance seriously everyone will be held accountable for their attendance. Now, assignments will be graded. You're probably thinking, Ms. Cobb, don't we always grade assignments? But I wanna clarify that. In the spring, in March 13th, when we went out and we went to learning packets, things were a little lax and we were a little bit flexible on completing those and what it looked like to complete them and how they were graded. That's no longer. We're gonna start back to school on Monday and we're gonna take that seriously and our assignments will be graded and will be weighted at different percentages per each classroom. Teachers will be planning Google Meet check-ins so that they can meet with the virtual learners and make that connection, build those relationships and check on our students to make sure that they're doing well virtually and everything's going fine at home. There will be teacher office hours throughout the week each department has scheduled those, and then teacher office hours are on Friday, and we have a master schedule of office hours as well. 
You'll be able to find out when teachers are available through the Google Classrooms once you sign up for those. The Student Code of Conduct still applies online, so we will be taking discipline seriously even if you are a virtual student, um, so make sure you're following all protocol when it comes to the Code of Conduct. And if you have any technology problems, now initially we are going to have a day this coming Monday, August 31st, for all virtual learners. If you're at home, you can't get logged in, your login's not working, you don't understand Google Classroom, any kind of question you have with technology, we're going to open up the library from 1 to 3 p.m. on August 31st and you can come through the library doors and our tech team will be here to support you with any technology issue, issues you have. Um, that you don't have to stay for the two hours. You can come and go freely from one to three, but that is an option available for you. As we go further into the semester, Conrad Patterson will be the contact for any technology you issues you have while you are at home, and you can reach him through email at conrad.patterson at bvcps.net. Now, for our blended learners, again, you are virtual on three days a week, but when you're in the building, either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday, you will have four classes per day. Those classes will be 80 minutes of instruction, and so you'll be in the classrooms first, second, third, and fourth block, as we usually do. Um, you will receive direct instruction when you're in the building. So your teachers will be teaching you those lessons, providing those lectures, and giving you the information that you need to succeed through the week. You are required to log in to Google Classroom on your virtual days, whether that be Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's based on your schedule, Group A or Group B. So when you're at home, you are expected to log in. And you'll be completing those supplementary assignments that um, counter what you've learned on the days that you are in school. Again, virtual days will be about three to six hours per day, whether you're a blended learner or a virtual learner, that you'll be spending on work when you're at home through Google Classroom. Students who are coming to school will be required to wear a mask at all times. The only time that we will not have a mask on is in the classroom if you are in your six-foot box. When you are in your classroom, you'll, you'll understand this, it will make more sense to you, but when you're in your area, in the six-foot area, no one's in your space and the teacher's at the front of the room teaching, then you can have your mask down. And the teacher, if they are in their eight-foot box in the front of the room, they can have their mask down as well. However, if a student comes into your area or you approach another student or the teacher comes to your desk to help you with something, both masks must come up. So it's only going to be down when you're in your area in the classroom. Transitions, lunch, every other time, except when you're eating, um, you will have your mask on. The bell schedule this year, it does look a little different and I'll make sure it gets posted online um, for parents if you need it. But for our blended learners, our day is starting at 8.30 this year, not 8.15. That's a little bit different and the reason is because of transportation. Due to our social distancing on the bus, we can only transport 23 students at a time, and we are the last drop-off this year. So our students will be reporting to the high school last based on the transportation schedule. So we've backed up our start date until 8.30. Our warning bells do start at 8.20 and 8.25, but st uh, students are required to be in the classroom at 8.30. There is a homeroom period that will be during our first block. It's the first thing that we start with. When students start arriving, they will come through the gym, and I'll explain this in just a second, but they'll have their temperature checked, they'll go get their breakfast in the commons, which is grab and go breakfast, and they'll go straight to their first block and wait until 8.30. Once 8.30 hits, we have a 15 minute period where we can check more temperatures if we need to, eat that breakfast, you'll hear me making my lovely announcements every morning, and we'll just take care of some housekeeping items from 8.30 to 8.45. Now, I know that you all have gotten your tardiness out of you, so you won't be late, but if you are, that's your time to get here, 8.30 to 8.45, you will be counted tardy, unexcused or excused, hopefully excused, but we will do those last minute temperature checks within the classroom at that time if you are late after 8.30. First block will start at 8.45, and again, we'll have 80 minute blocks throughout the day. Our school day will end at three o'clock, but please note, 
the end of the day will be a little bit different because we will do a staggered release. So we will be working from 3 to 3.30 to get our students out of the building safely to whatever type of transportation they have and home. So please be ready to work with us. The staggered transition for um, exiting the building will start with seniors, uh, student drivers, car riders, and then the bus transportation will be the last thing. This may get better, but again, this is what we're trying at the first week and we'll work out any problems that we have at that time. Lunch will happen during third block. Third block is from 11.35 to 1.30, but you have a 30 minute lunch period either before your third block class or at the end of your third block class. You will eat lunch in the classroom with your teachers and your teacher will be bringing students to the commons in a line to pick up their lunch, even if they didn't buy lunch this year. Even if they packed, they will still go with their class at that time to go to the commons to pick up the lunch and then they'll return to the classroom and eat it in the classroom and they'll have a 30 minute window for that. Virtually, if you are a virtual student, which again applies to everyone, either three days or five days, we are offering breakfast and lunch at Enderly Heights Elementary School for pickup, just like we've done this entire time since we went out on March 13th. If you are picking up, and it's all at one time, breakfast or lunch, Monday through Thursday, you'll pick up between 10 and 10.30. And if you are picking up on Friday, the window is from 10 to noon. Again, that's at Enderly Heights Elementary. And so all breakfast and lunch is free for all of our students pre-K through 12 this year, which is great news. Take advantage of that if you need breakfast and lunch for your child and you're a virtual learner on those days, go pick up your food at Enderly and take advantage of that opportunity. If we do need to know that in advance, so if you do want that, please call our school at 540-261-2127 and we'll make arrangements for that meal to be provided for you. It will not be delivered. Again, you'll have to pick it up at Enderly Heights Elementary. Now to talk about our procedures for the school day, our health and safety protocol for our blended learners, here's how it's going to work. Starting with transportation, which I mentioned before. With transportation, we're the last drop off. It, you'll be dropped off on the curb. It's a little bit further up, closer to the flagpole this year. And you'll see the sidewalk has PM stencils all the way leading you to the gym. So not the original drop off like we've done for every year in the past. Go a little bit further up around the circle. You'll see the sidewalk with the PM stencils. That's for car riders and bus riders. That's where you'll be dropped off. You'll take that sidewalk in, keeping social distance, of course, until you get to the gym. When you get to the gym, you'll be met by four of our teachers who will take your temperature. Now, parents, it is up to you to self-screen before you send your child to school or bring your child to school. There is a QR code, which we will post online. We provided it at Back to School Night, and if you need a copy, we'll get it to you, or you'll, you can get it online but you will complete a Google form each morning. This is not an August 31st thing and a September 1st thing and oh, we're done, we forgot about it. It's a routine. So you need to get into the habit of completing that Google form every morning before you send your child to school. You are telling us at that point that your child is safe to come to school because they are not having any symptoms, any COVID-like symptoms or any fever and that you feel like it's okay to send them on to school. We're going to take you at your word and then check their temperature that morning before letting them into the gym. When they go into the gym, they will stay to the far right, walk down to the hallway, go up the ramp, and then they will grab their breakfast at grab and go breakfast at the entrance of the commons. They won't actually enter the commons. There will be a table there with bagged breakfast food for them to pick up if they're interested. Remember, it's free for everyone, so let's take advantage of that breakfast. It's going to be hard to get back into this routine, and we want to make sure our students feel like they're not hungry all day. So take advantage of that grab-and-go breakfast, and then they'll head on down the hallway into their first block. They will wait patiently there until 8.30, and that's when our school day begins. Classrooms have been set up. They look great, but they are socially distanced. The maximum capacity of students for most of our classrooms is 11, so we've built our schedule around that, unless they are in Mrs. Owen's room, Mr. Floyd's room, Miss Beverly's room, or Miss Jolly's room. Those four, I'm sorry, Mrs. Moala's room, she's recently gotten married, congratulations. But those four rooms can have a few more students in them, so we've, we've taken that into account. Now you'll notice when you go in the classrooms, there's vinyl on the floor, which tells us where the desk should go, where the chair should go, where the teacher's eight foot box is in the front, which they will stay in unless a student asks for help. 
and so they have been arranged to accommodate for social distancing and for the COVID measures by the CDC. Restrooms. The restroom near the commons and the gym has been closed for the year. The only restroom that will be open will be the one on the main hallway. Students are free to use that restroom at teacher discretion all throughout the class blocks. When we are transitioning, students will not be able to use the restroom. We do not want a large gathering in the restroom, and when they are using it during the classes, there's a bathroom monitor. Everyone has a duty to watch the bathroom at some point during the day, and they will let them in one at a time, so there will not be any mingling in the bathroom. We will go in one at a time, and if we have a line, we will socially distance down the hallway and wait for our turn to go into the restroom. Water fountains have been shut off and closed for the year. Students are expected to bring a bottle where they can fill their water. We have an igloo container at the bathroom station. The bathroom monitor will fill that water bottle with gloves on and make sure that they have the water that they need to get through the day. Our school division will be providing water bottles. They have not arrived at this time, so please make sure you send a water bottle with your students if you feel like they're going to need water throughout the day because again, water fountains are closed for the year. Transitions. So we are going to allow our students to move from one class to the other because we are different at the high school and we have different subjects and different things to teach per grade level. So Mr. Clark and myself will release students from their classes and to go to the next class. We have bells and we have a five minute transition period, but we will physically release them to go to their next classroom so that we make sure we are socially distancing in the hallway and we're avoiding crowds in the hallway. Lunch, like I said earlier, will be eaten in the classroom. Teachers will take their students to the lunchroom, all students, whether they packed or they didn't, to the, to the commons to pick up their lunch. That no microwaves are available for student use, no refrigerators are available for student use, but the lunch will be picked up in the commons, taken back to the classroom, and eaten in the classroom with the teacher either before third block or after third block, and the teachers will let them know on their first days of school for that. Lockers will not be available for student use this year. All belongings must stay with the student within their six foot area in each of the classrooms. Again, the dismissal starts at 3 o'clock. It will probably end around 3.30, and it will be a staggered dismissal based on seniors, student drivers, car riders, and bus riders. Now, like I said before, we hope our students aren't tardy, but we know that we all have, always have something come up, or we may need to check out our students. So let me tell you how that will work. If a student is late to school and they miss the procedure where they go through the gym, they will come straight to the front office if it is after 8.30. You will, as the parent, will accompany that student to the door where you will ring the doorbell. The student will be let in at that time, the parent will not. And that will signify that they are late. If they are a student driver, obviously you won't have to accompany them, but if they are not, please go ahead and send them on up with you so that we can see what's happening. We'll let the student in, take their temperature, and send them on to class. If you need to check out a student early, you will call the office at 540-261-2127. Mrs. Barger or Mrs. Bolin will take your call, figure out which student needs to be checked out, remove them from class, have them waiting in the office. When you are there to pick them up, you come to the front office door, ring the doorbell, we'll see you through the camera, and we'll send your child out. You will not enter the school either for late arrival or for checkout. We'll take care of all signatures for you. There will be no visitors allowed to the school this year. Please make an appointment if you do need to come in and speak with someone. But again, no visitors. We are by appointment only. For the nurse protocol, typically we've been very free in letting our students come to the nurse and meet her in the clinic for any health needs. This year we're trying to take care of everything in the classroom so that we eliminate them coming to the front office unless it's an emergency. Teachers have been prepped with kits to deal with any minor issues like a band-aid or anything that they feel they can handle. If they feel like it does need to be seen by a nurse, they will call the office. If the nurse is not here, I will go down and get them or Mr. Clark will go down and get the student and accompany them to the office to take care of their needs. The cleaning protocol, we are taking cleaning very serious. It is super serious that we deal with our health and safety of our students this year. So each classroom has been equipped with a bucket. It is full of cleaning supplies and students will be trained. At the end of each block, they will clean their own personal area. We will also be wiping down door handles and taking care of classroom needs. 
as necessary. At the end of each day, each classroom will be fogged. We have purchased a fogging machine and they will be sprayed down. It dries within 10 minutes and kills the virus instantly. Bathrooms will be fogged as well. And if we feel like we need to um, fog it during the day, during a teacher's planning, we will do so. So that wraps up the presentation. If you have any questions, again, feel free to call or reach out to me by email and we will take care of those. Counselors are happy to work with you as well as you are adjusting schedules. But what I want you to remember is we are all in this together. I know it's a term that's used a lot, but we really need to be flexible this year and we really need to partner to make sure we are setting up your child for success. This is a difficult time, it's an unusual time, and no one has the right answers, but we are gonna to work together to make sure that our students are safe, our teachers are safe, and that everyone is being educated to the best of our abilities. Again, virtual students, we will have the library open on Monday from 1 to 3 p.m. Come and go as you would like, and you can get your Chromebook fixed or ask any questions about the technology piece. Our tech team will be here to work with you. If you need to reach out to a teacher, please email them and they will get you your Google Classroom codes if you need those. If you're a blended learner and you come on Monday, we can't wait to see you. If you're a blended learner and you come on Tuesday, don't worry about the virtual learning on Monday. Come on in on Tuesday, we'll get you settled into the school, get you into a routine, and then you can begin your virtual learning on Wednesday. Again, if you have any questions, melissa.cobb at bvcps.net. We're here for you and we want to make sure that this is a great school year. Thank you and have a great day.